All right, good evening and happy Valentine's Day to you. And happy first day of Lent. How many of you knew that today uh, is the first day of Lent? All right, yeah, you can raise your hands. And uh, how many of you know what that actually means? 40 days towards Easter, right? So the Christian calendar marking the move uh, and march towards Easter, right? Which is a good thing. Um, Historically, Christians have uh, uh, marked a calendar and tried to be quite intentional in moving towards the holy days and... uh, Commonly, the practice, right, is to give up something as, as a march and a move towards Easter with intentionality, uh, hence Lent. And so at the beginning, uh, this first day of Lent, um, we've been walking through on Wednesday nights the commands of Jesus, and this one uh, is fitting, right? What Jesus demands of the world, Jesus says... Anyone who wishes to come after me, you can put it up there, Luke uh, chapter 9, verse 23. Anyone who wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, right? To take up our cross and follow Christ, a demand of Jesus, take up your cross and follow me. So let's walk through this really quick and just quickly unpack what this means, Jesus' demand, right? If he requires that of every one of us as his disciples, what does this mean? Well, first, let's look at this command to follow me, all right? Follow me. Now, the disciples Jesus came and interacted with, and uh, to each of them, he had a particular call upon their life. Remember, uh, Matthew was a a tax collector, and uh, uh, Andrew and Peter were fishermen, and he literally came up to them and said, follow me. And what did it mean? Follow me. Like, literally, right? Because here I am. I'm Jesus. If you want to be one of my dis- I am a rabbi. Come and follow me. And they did. All right? So they left their vocations and they followed him. Well, Jesus is no longer here. So w- what does that mean uh, for us? Well, you need to know that this is a call that it's put on every Christian's life, and this command continues. Here's uh, one way we know. At the end of John's gospel, after Jesus has been resurrected, in John chapter 21, Jesus meets with Peter, and he restores Peter. And then he tells Peter, hey, you are going to die. And, And he tells him, right, basically, Peter's going to be crucified upside down. Well, Peter, wanting to deflect, says, hey, whoa, whoa, what about that guy? Pointing to John. All right, and this is Jesus' reply. If I want that guy, John, to remain all the way until I come again, right? That's my business. What is that to you? And then he commands Peter, you follow me. So the command to follow Jesus extends even after Jesus' ascension, right? So what does it mean for us to follow him? If you had to give a quick definite, what does it mean for us when Jesus says, I want you to follow me because he's ascended into heaven? Well, simply put, to follow Jesus in this command means that we are on mission with him, right? You join Jesus in his mission. In the call to the kingdom, Jesus said, I came to bring about the kingdom of God, and he invites you into that kingdom. Jesus came to glorify God the Father, and he came to gather a people, right? To save and to gather a people unto himself and to the Father. He also came to uh, to save and to seek that which was lost. So all of these kingdom commands that Jesus uh preaches and teaches upon, the whole entire reason he came, all of this is what it means for you and us to follow him. So to follow Jesus, you have to be about his kingdom. 
okay? And he is gathering a people unto himself, unto the kingdom. That's what it means to follow him. So now let's, let's shift and let's take a look at this part where he says, you have to take up your cross in order to follow him. First, we must point out that this is where Jesus is going. Jesus is saying to his disciples ahead of time, follow me if you want to follow me. And then he lays out that the way that he is going is the way of the cross. Now that's radical. That is mind-blowing for the disciples. They have no concept of that. They want to see him, the high exalted king who's ruling and reigning there in Jerusalem. And he says, listen, if you want to be, if you want to be one of my, you have to follow me and I'm going the way of the cross into suffering opposite the world. The scripture says, and this is important on the first day of Lent, right? That Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He set his face and then he, he marched towards Jerusalem. So to, for us, for you and I to follow Jesus, and to take up our cross daily means that there is an act of self-denial and counting the cost. Jesus is full of count the cost of what it means to follow me. You must take up your cross. You must deny yourself to follow me. Now, again, this always causes me to, to pause and to drive a stake into the ground so that we never miss it. You must never miss the call is to Jesus himself, okay? The call is not to endless suffering. It's not the call to be a martyr and, and to become a victim and, and any of those things. The call is always to Jesus himself, ultimately declaring that he is better, that he is better. The, the call is to Jesus, to peace, to joy with him, always to him. But in going to him, you will walk opposite of the world. And there will be a call that's put on the values and treasures of the world. And scripture would say, beloved, those things are temporary. Those things don't last. Jesus is actually, he calls us to eternal treasures and eternal joy and, and things that last, which is where he is. So I always pause, I always insert that so that you never think the calls are legalistic calls. The calls are always calls to joy. They are calls to what truly lasts and the calls are to him. But that said, he tells us that you need to count the cost of following him. You and I need to count the cost. And the cost of following him, one, will show up in relationships. Will show up in relationships. There's this radical passage where someone comes up to Jesus and says, I will follow you, but first let me go bury my dead. I, I gotta be around to bury my dad. Just so you know, uh, burials happened uh, immediately the day of in that culture. And so the guy's saying, my father is elderly. I need to stick around. And he doesn't know how long it's going to be, right? If his dad died that day, he'd let him go to the funeral, all right? But Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead. You want to come? You got to follow me now. I would tell you the, the biggest cost that has come to me and to my family from, from being a pastor and from answering the call into ministry has been the fact that I haven't been close to family. We've moved around multiple times and reared our children. In fact, it's a tremendous blessing that my mother-in-law is here in Bernie, moved here to be with us because we thought that this would be a long spot that we would be, praise God, let's hope, yes. But that said, it's, there's been a cost to following him, to answering that call that's made family kind of distant, right? And Jesus says that there's going to be a cost to relationships. He who loves his father, father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And, and he who loves his children or brother and sister more is, is not worthy of me. 
There, there is a cost to following Jesus in our relationships. Secondly, there's a cost to our possessions to follow Jesus, right? You remember the rich young ruler that comes to Jesus and he has, he has power and he has youth and he has finances and influence. He has all of those things. And Jesus is able to look right at his heart and immediately say, listen, you need to sell everything. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Anything that crowds out your heart in the area of possessions. This is what Jesus means whenever he says, you must take up your cross daily and follow me. And we know that there's going to be a cost in the way that that we view possessions of the world versus eternal possessions that Jesus gives us. And then thirdly, we would say in our purpose that there is accounting of a cost to our purpose in life. It may be your vocation, but to come to faith in Jesus is is a calling to purpose. You are invited into the kingdom and you cannot exclude that. You cannot help. To follow Jesus immediately means suddenly the kingdom of God has become the highest purpose that I can now have. Let me give you an example. In, in Mark chapter 5, there's uh, what we know as the Gerasene demoniac. He is a, a man who had been demon-possessed by many, many demons. And Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, went over there, and no one could contain this guy. They stuck him in the, uh, in the cemetery because it, he had wrecked so many relationships and homes and all that. They, they didn't know what to do with him. They chained him and they stuck him in the seminary, and he was an absolute madman. And Jesus comes and casts out the demons, and heals him. And all we know is the name Gerasene Demoniac, but he says, he says Jesus, I want to I come with you. I want to go where you're going and be part of your team. Now, that's, that's, he's immediately taken on kingdom purpose. Do you know what Jesus said to him? He said, you got to stay here, and you need to go back to all of those people They're in your community, and you need to share the good news with them. So to take up our cross and to follow him, it is a call to count the cost in our relationships because Jesus is always first. It's a call to count the cost in our possessions that we would use, that anything that crowds our heart can never take the supreme place Jesus must always be number one. And instead, you should use your possessions for the kingdom strategically because the kingdom has now become number one and count the cost in purpose. That is that we have but short time, beloved. The day is drawing near when your time will be finished or King Jesus will come back. And as believers, we will look and walk different from the world. Anyone who wishes to come after me must tape up his cross daily and then come follow me. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. It is a good word. It convicts our hearts. It charges us. It challenges us. But it is good It is from you. It is a direct command from your son to our hearts. That is, you are better. You are greater. Following you is our every, it is what our hearts long for. And this first day of Lent, as we mark 40 days in a march towards Easter, remembering that you set your face towards Jerusalem and march towards the cross, we too remember the importance of counting the cost and taking up our cross to follow you. Only with your strength, only through your Holy Spirit, but we love you. And we want to walk worthy of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Turn me back on real quick. We have a gift for you.
this Lent, this 40 days towards Easter, in the foyer, this is a little 40-day prayer guide, okay? Uh, so just as a church, as a family, pick one of these up. These are daily devotionals and a prayer guide uh, for your own devotion as you, we move towards Lent. Also, this Sunday, we're going to be rolling out what we are doing as a church uh, moving, towards, uh, moving towards Easter uh, because our culture, our community is open to the good news of Jesus at Easter more than any other time. Okay, and we're going to be in prayer for that. Let me remind you, this Sunday night, we're having a special prayer service uh, for our youth, for Disciple Now, and to, as we move towards Easter. Okay, so grab one of these in the foyer on your way out. God bless you guys.